right now, what we're thinking about is something called your core values. You're thinking about the parts of a person that makes them really stand out. Some of the examples I heard was I heard caring, I heard respectful, I heard humility, being humble, I heard kindness, I heard generosity, right? A lot of times when you say this person is my friend, when you say this person is my friend, we can't even describe what it is we respect about them because a lot of times we don't know the language. And so today I'm gonna to give you the opportunity to think about this for yourself. However, just looking at how people are showing up right now, I'm gonna be completely honest with you because I work with youth activists across the country, right? Some people will say nobody takes me seriously, but then when they're given an opportunity to be taken seriously, they don't actually do it. And so right now I'm gonna give you an opportunity to think about yourself to think about what it is that is important to you. So I'm gonna ask you really quick, I'm gonna do a whip around. What's important to you? What is an idea or belief that you think is important in your life? I'm a production. Hey, what's up folks? Welcome to Education Monthly. This is our second episode and you don't know if you can tell there's no split line down the middle <laughs> there's no two different backgrounds like this is not not vgi like we are in person look we're in person we're in person and yesterday we had um oh, oh, I'm, here. I'm getting too excited let me get, get ahead of myself we are here in redwood regional park i've never been here before have you been here no absolutely not a beautiful place there's some redwoods up that up further up in the hills but we are in a beautiful little area that we get to come and um, have this conversation with each other today. So um, excited to like jump into what we saw yesterday. Um, who are you? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to jump in. So we introduced ourselves last time, but let me say I'm Ashanti Branch from the Ever Forward Club. I was a teacher for many years, administrator, and now I work on the outside of schools serving to build capacity for schools to do better work. My name is Donovan Taylor Hall. I am an educator, a youth speaker, and most importantly, a youth advocate. And I travel across the country working with young people on mental health and youth empowerment. And we presented yesterday, well, Donovan presented to our young men at one of our middle schools, Unity Middle School. Donovan came in and presented an amazing workshop with them. Yeah, so I uh, usually do a lot of presentations and workshops on mental health, but a big passion of mine is youth empowerment. Um, and one of the most important things I think we miss out on uh, with kids is talking to them about their values, their core values. I think they are hyper aware of other people's values that have been pushed on them, um, parents, society, teachers, but when given a chance to say what's important to you, that's not a physical object, um, it's a really powerful experience. And I don't think a lot of people have the opportunity to really articulate those things or have access to those lists. So I got a chance to talk to them about the things that they value in their lives versus like the, the beliefs that that really determine the way and impact the way that they show up, the way that they think, the way that they act, the way they feel. And it was um, really cool. It started off very much like, uh, you know, not sure what's happening to kids really standing up for what they believe in. So that's the presentation that we were able to do with them. You've been a long time since so you've been with us in person. Yeah, the yeah. Last time we were together was at Lowell. Yep. That was 2016, maybe? Yeah, 2017, it was 2017? the only time. It was I wasn't even speaking professionally i think i don't even know how i we connected i think i reached out and asked you to shadow you Man. and i got to go to a speech and it's literally what encouraged me to pursue it full time so kind of getting to be back in person is a very special opportunity especially getting to see the program that i heard about getting to see it in action with the kids that were benefiting from it was a really cool experience yeah, yeah. well maybe let's start there because um, you know, I, I see them weekly mostly, and um, but and I hadn't, I hadn't seen them for two weeks because I've been traveling. So some of them had were, were, were so excited to see them, see, excited to see me. I was that was a beautiful moment in those. But what did you? Let's just start with what did you notice? What did you notice? What did you experience before we get into your talk? Because your talk was powerful, um, and I wanted to love to hear your feedback of what you saw and what you experienced there. But just as you came to the school, you got to observe some young women classes. Mm -hmm. What what was what stood out to you? Yeah, I think right now I'm paying a lot of attention to engagement and what helps young people feel engaged and also what helps or what kind of creates disengagement and then seeing how that manifests and behaviors. And with middle schoolers, I mean, it's kind of common across the board, uh, those behaviors, but getting to see it in person yesterday, um, hearing that this person is struggling with academics, but then seeing the way that they are distracting other people, really kind of distracting themselves from the work, uh, really 
kind of sheds light on this bigger issue that I've been talking about with is, or what is, you know, if how you feel about learning and how you feel about your ability to learn affects the way that you show up. And so a lot of people will write kids off and say that they're bad students, but I think that there's a really strong connection between like, I don't understand this, or this is like a class that frustrates me in a way that doesn't help me grow and how that like impacts the way that I show up in that space. Cause if you, if you don't understand what you're doing or you're struggling to understand what you're doing, you're just going to sit there. You're going to sit there and, and struggle with the thoughts and, you know, kind of even maybe get to this point of like suffering. Cause you're like, I have no idea what to do or I don't know what's happening to me. And so I saw a lot of kids trying to take control of that, I think tough feeling and it manifested in, you know, distraction and yeah. playing games on the computer or messing with the people around them. Um, and then, you know, without jumping into the actual speech we did, I think a big part is when kids are not engaged in something that matters to them, like how does that show up in the way that they show up? Um, I think it's just a direct response to how they were feeling in the classes. So I witnessed a lot of that, but I also witnessed, which I think is really cool for middle schoolers, this sense that their teachers care and that relationships are really important. And even seeing different classes and different teachers, how kids show up in one class versus how they show up in another class, even if they may be struggling academically in that class, if there's a relationship there, there's, um, it feels like there's bigger buy-in uh, to that space and what they need to do in that space. So those are some pretty big things that I observed. Um, it's interesting to be able to get to see them in their learning moments and what that looks like. But I even for myself, when I was in the math class, had my own kind of, I don't feel good at math, I'm struggling, like let me turn and talk to the people around me and kind of distracting myself uh, from thinking about or doing the work. I'd rather distract myself than have to like face the fact that I don't feel good at math. So having that experience for myself and then seeing it being mirrored in the young people, I think is really interesting. Oakland Uni Middle School. Oakland Uni Middle School. That's Jose in that video. Uh, Jose is hilarious. I don't know what, what he does, but he's a doctor. He talks about how what addicts kids to video games is the feedback is immediate mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. rapid. Mm -hmm. You make a mistake, your, your, your character falls off the cliff, you let to start over. The immediate, it's immediate feedback. Yeah. You're eaten by the goblin, you get whatever, whatever the other games work, right? Like, game, those are old games, right? <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I was like, you're a gamer, you're so I'm sorry. He's like, goblins, there ain't no goblins no, in these days. Whatever, whatever. So. <laughs> this was old man. He says there was a goblin, okay, whatever it was. It was, it was a, you got, you're gonna lose. How about that? You're gonna, you're gonna lose. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so when you lose, you but it's immediate. Yeah. Now when you do homework, you gotta do it the night, say eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. You got the rest of the night to sleep, to wake up the next morning. You go to that same class again the next day. Two, mm -hmm. So 24 hours later, maybe 12, 20, 15 hours later, you turn it in. You're not gonna get it back usually right away unless there's some mechanism where you get graded right away. But most times it's like a day later, two days later where you realize, oh, that was wrong. I did all that work and I didn't even know it was wrong. And how how quick how how does that create the part where you just like, I ain't doing it no more. Yeah, yeah. I did it all. I, I did it all. We've spent my time doing it. Then I got feedback that it was wrong two days later, and I'm still like, what? What? What does that mean? Yeah. And so I think what happens, and I tell parents in this work, and I show that clip. It's like we have to find a way to let academics also give that immediate feedback mm -hmm. that are clear consequences right away, right? And I think it can't be punishment consequences. It needs to be like as a part of the system, right? Yeah. And I don't know, and I think the schools just has to be, I mean, I, I'm really a big component of like, how do we redesign schools for students who hate school? Mm -hmm. Like, schools are gonna work for the kids who love school. That's what schools are designed for. Kids who love school, sit there, be quiet, do the work. Sit there, be quiet, do the work. Mm -hmm. Sit there, be quiet, do the work. It's gonna work for those kids all day long. But the kids who hate being there is where schools fail the most. Yeah, I think there's a big part around like the culture of learning, like re reframing failing and mistake making, because they do that, you're right. When I play video games on Twitch, like the kids do that all the time, but it's not attached to a consequence, right? It's like attached to something that's fun to them. And it's also not like attached, like you're not in trouble if you get something wrong, but because of the way that school's developed, it feels like a lot of young people are like, I'm in trouble or I'm not good if I don't get something versus like, this is a part of the process. You have to be able to fail. But even at the schools where I go where kids are like, 
high academic and high achieving. Like a lot of those kids who we would say love school, a lot of those kids are doing it for safety reasons. It's like they're doing it because it's what's expected of them and they and they feel good about like, this is what I have to do. This is what my parents and my teachers expect. And so when I work with high schoolers who are from high achieving schools, a lot of those kids suffer from anxiety and they suffer from pressure or overwhelm because they feel like I have to do this. It's not even attached to the love of learning for some kids. So it's like really figuring out how do we detach this idea of feeling emotionally safe because it is hard to do those things, but then also like how do you make how do you make you know circumstances safe for young people to learn? But I think it's really challenging like these beliefs that we have around making mistakes or failing. Like it doesn't feel good to fail. But then we're out here saying like, you have to fail, but then if you get an F, you're in trouble or you're a bad student, right? But aren't you failing? Yeah. So it doesn't, I think the messages that kids are getting, I mean, I ask kids all the time, like why, like what they think of their teachers and kids will often say, this teacher doesn't like me because I have bad grades. Yeah. I think it's an important point you talked about, like when I don't understand something and I find myself like feeling frustrated, it's hard to learn, mm -hmm. but there's going to be plenty of things in schools that kids don't really want to learn. Mm -hmm. And so I think like we can't like say we'll give you only the things you like to do. Mm -hmm. So we got to I think educators have a responsibility to figure, well, like I told students, I'm not going to be dancing up here for you. <laughs> I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to be jumping on the table, doing no moves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm going to give my best to you. You know what I'm saying? So if you're looking for somebody to be entertaining you, mm -hmm. that's not what my role is. I'm not yeah. here to entertain you. I'm here to educate you. Now, how can we make inter education somewhat entertaining? Mm -hmm. I wanted mm -hmm. to do that. I want, but I also knew that what I saw pe other people doing, that I don't, I, I don't, that's not a, a skill that I have. Yeah. There's certain things I'm willing to learn, but I'm not going to be trying to just create a dance move mm -hmm. so that you will pay attention to me. And I, what am I doing? Every week I'm going to have to learn a new dance move? Mm -hmm. No way. No way. I, I think, too, it's like, it's important to teach the balance between fun and, and doing the work, you know, and, and that's something that I've, I've even tried to do into my speeches where it's like, it can't all be fun, you know, and that's, it's not teaching them the lesson of life because life is oftentimes not fun and doing the things that you need to do oftentimes are not fun. And you can find ways to keep yourself entertained or you can find ways to connect it to motivation. But if we allow this idea that everything has to be fun, everything has to be instantly entertaining, then you're kind of robbing young people of the opportunity to do tougher work, to do the serious things. And, and that's a skill that they need to have um, going into the workforce, yeah. going into their preferred, well, you know, growing into their adult life is being able to do the tough stuff without this expectation of everything is going to be fun or everything is going to be enjoying, right? And that's that's like a tough pill. So I think it's important for them to, to do that. And even yesterday before I presented, I found myself wanting to lean into the fun, but you have a short amount of time and it's like, fun is not why we're here. <laughs> and that's tough for me because fun is a huge core value of mine. But I also think like we can have fun for a little bit and then we're going to do the work. That's like the deal. Right? Yeah. We, can, we can have fun so we can do the work. Oh, that was huge. And I, and I was like, OK, I was like, maybe he's changing his plan. Because in my mind, when when the, when they are out there playing, I was like, yeah. oh, maybe he's gonna, maybe he's pivoting. Yeah. I'm quick to pivot. I'm quick to be like, OK, that we, the technology is not working. Yeah. Let's do something else. So I was like, let me leave it alone. And then I'm like, well, wait a minute. If he's actually going to present, so I, in my mind, I'm hoping to hold those two lanes too. Like, oh, he's getting to know them. That's a great way to get to know them. They love to play. Yeah, they're yeah. building some rapport, and so I think that actually helped when you when we brought them back into the room because, you know, when you had to get on a couple of them, they'd already play had seen you in mm -hmm. playful mode, right? Mm -hmm. It's like I'd already invested a little bit in you. I'd already deposited some 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 coins into your our social um, connection. Yeah. So now when I'm holding you accountable. It's a little easier than some stranger yeah. who's like, hey, and you were good about it. You, you, you do much better at it than I do around holding them accountable. But I think you do it in such a beautiful way, you know. Um, and I think they need it. They need yeah. both sides. They need, yes, life is not always going to be fun. Mm -hmm. School is not always going to be fun. Education, you're not going to like to do everything you have to do in life. Yeah. You know, like some things are going to happen unexpectedly. Yeah. Like life is going to hit you with unexpected things. They're not going to be fun. You can't just be like, ah. Well, we see a lot of people do that. They just escape the things they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and we see it happen not only through addictions, but through just numbing mm -hmm. through other mm -hmm. other behaviors. And I think in education, schools have to have a balance. And I think, we don't, but if we don't, 
want to understand what they enjoy Mm -hmm. and we only say well you can just hate it just hate it just hate it how long am i going to show up to something that i just i'm bad at i hate and i don't want to be there and you don't want me here yeah and i begin to feel that pressure too you know yeah i mean i was talking to a couple of the boys about motivation um and the one boy was just like i just can't find the motivation Mm -hmm. and i what i one of the things i tried to encourage to him is like you probably are motivated to do some things but what you're saying is i'm not motivated to do the things i don't want to do and school is so extrinsically motivated meaning like i have to get a good grade or i don't want to get in trouble right and it's like the kids who struggle with that are the ones who are disconnected from their educational experience but for the most part kids look at school like this is something I have to do. I have to get good grades or I have to um, I have to do this in order to not get in trouble. And then intrinsic motivation, I do this because I want to, right? I do this because it's connected to something I care about, right? We want kids to be intrinsically motivated. We want kids to be future oriented, but they're not, and they're not there. And so how do you, and we were talking about this with video games yesterday. Yeah. How do you create an experience that can give kids kind of instant feedback without also like doing this kind of recreating the same process that social media all these things that really like shorten our attention are doing to young people and so just talking to them about like you know if if you don't want to do chores Mm -hmm. right what's what's a way that you can feel motivated to do it and we talked about family family is important to me so then if okay if i'm if i know i'm helping my family out or i know i'm helping my mom out right that's a way bigger motivator than like i don't want to get in trouble or i have to do this that's an intrinsic thing but i think a lot of people struggle um to figure out how to build or how to help young people build intrinsic motivation because for a lot of them school is not something they're excited about it's just not intrinsically i mean i meet kids and usually those kids are the ones who love of learning is a big thing for them and and they enjoy school and it's like a fun you know, endeavor for them, or they are thinking about their future. There are kids like that. But for the most part, it's like, I don't really know why I have to do this. I'm being forced to do it. So if you look at that system and then you say, well, how do you build motivation within that larger system if I don't want to do this? It it just gets kind of tough, you know? Guys, this is the wild tiny. This is a wild donatio. This is a wild donatio. I repeat, he's doing thing in it, thing in it, thing in it. I saw you put bravery here. What did you mean by that? Standing up for yourself. Standing up for yourself? What about for other people? Yeah, same thing. Is that in every situation you got to stand up for somebody? Or just in certain ones? So someone says respect is important to me, and then their actions do not match it. Right? Somebody says being humble is important to me, and then their actions don't match it. And today I'm going to give you a chance to think about it. A lot of the reasons that we don't know it is because we don't have access to those words. So I'll tell you what my core values are. Right, my five core values. Number one is humor. Being funny, laughing, it's a huge core value of mine. The second one is growth. I care about being better. I care about helping young people grow. Third one is kindness. I believe really deeply that being kind, especially to kids is super important. The fourth one is gratitude. Anyone know what gratitude is? What's gratitude? Being, yeah. What's another word we use for gratitude? Grateful. grateful. What does grateful mean, I'll say? Like, uh, thank somebody. Yeah. So being thankful. And the last one would be, man, I gotta think about this one. The last one would be creativity. I believe that this thing is very important to me. So it, sh- it affects the way I show up. A lot of young people don't know what's important to them. They might say something like followers, or they may, might say something like money, right? That's all they got. But a lot of people are walking around this world not knowing what's important to them. And so today I want you to think about what's important to me. So now that I gave you some examples, right? Anyone else have anything that comes to the top of their head of something that they think is important to them? Even if other people in your life don't think it's important. Uh, Staff and uh, family. Family? What was the first one? Staff. Staff at the school? Yeah. So community. Community is important to you some words up on the board and I'm going to ask you to try to pick some words that you think are important to you. If you take this seriously, you can leave learning something really important about yourself. If you don't take it seriously, you continue to not take yourself seriously. It's up to you. One of the things that you said yesterday and I think is really powerful, maybe we jump into how the the talk went, Um, you talked about values and I think helping young people, because what I talk to them about is their actions versus what they say, mm-hmm. right? And it's the word, it's the values, right? You, you're, you, what you say, you, or what's important to you is 
people being nice to you, not disrespecting you, etc. But yet your actions are you doing that to everyone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand. I understand like intellectually, but it's not working. Mm -hmm. it, sh it should be creating confusion in your own soul mm -hmm. because you're saying, here's how I want to be treated. Don't talk to me that way. Don't act. But yet you're doing it to others. Yeah. And so therefore, either you don't believe in that as a value for everyone, you just think that you should be able to do it to others and mm -hmm. it not happen to mm -hmm. you. And I think what I try and hold them to that understanding of like, why are you talking to me like that? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, sometimes they'll do it to me and I'm and I'm I'm I like my, my 12 year old is ready at any moment. <laughs> my, <laughs> he's he's immature and petty. <laughs> he's he's ready. And so you want to stare, you want to do a stare down contest? Yeah. Guess what? My 12 year old would not lose yeah. to a stare down contest with you, 12 year old. You yeah, know? Yeah. And so I'm like, OK, what's happening here? Am I this is a, this is a can I make a win out of this in a, in a, in a good way? Or am I just doing it as a, a ego boost, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you want to do it? You sure? And then um, once they're clear that they, they want they want it, mm -hmm. right? And whether whoever wins or not, I'm 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 pretty confident. I'm oh, sorry, I'm pretty confident I'm gonna win. Yeah. But ultimately, it's like, okay, got gotcha. it's okay. Well, we, I don't need to say anything about it. But you you saw what just happened here. Yeah. And making room for those both sides, right? Sometimes they're also trying to figure out where they stand in the hierarchy of men. Yeah. I'm like you are 12. I'm not. I don't have no desire to compete against you, young man. I'm like, there's nothing. There's nothing. You, you're you're 12. I'm not. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm gonna find out. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> so it's like, what are you doing? Like, okay. But ultimately, it's like, okay. There's a way of like them testing the water, and yeah. if they don't have healthy ways of testing it, you know. I mean, I think a stare down contest is a fairly healthy way, mm -hmm. right? It, it, there's a psychological desire to win right yeah in there but i think it's a play game and for the young men in our work how do we give them room to talk about what is important to them mm -hmm. and then ask them how are how is that showing up in your life yeah you yeah. know um that's what i we, we've done it in lots of ways but you really using the words the really clear words giving them opportunity to choose what are their words i think it was so so remarkable i don't want to tell too much about what you did but i'd love you to share how you saw it show up in the in the space yeah i mean i just think it's interesting well one doing the project having young people or having people because we had the adults in the room do it too really articulate here's what my core values are yeah. and and it's easy well one it's not easy to do that for everybody because a lot of them don't have access to the language and i think a lot of times when we assume because kids don't say certain things or even when you ask how a young person is doing, they say good or bad, we will like, oh, they're being short. They don't want to talk to us. Sometimes it's because they don't have the words to describe what they're talking about. And so asking young people to think about what is important to you, right? And not from your parents' perspective or from your teacher's perspective, like what is important to you? I saw a lot of like, I don't know. I mean, I think there was only one child who was able to say, this is important to me. And they picked up on something. Um, they said one of the, the values, but then they saw the list and it was, it was cool to see them engage with it and suddenly think, oh yeah, this is important. One of the things that was really cool to me yesterday was that um, as many times as I've done this program, I've never had kids pick honor. And I had two kids do it, but one of the kids who picked honor was then one of the people that was being disrespectful and also lying. And so it's like, then you get to do it a step further. So it's not just saying this is important, it's really connecting actions to it. So you say honor is important and then you lied, right? And then you you were disrespectful to the person who's here. And it, on the same token, there was another kid who said honor that when I was talking, there was a young man next to him who was trying to distract him and he kept redirecting him to be like, he's talking, he's talking. And I just met this kid and it took a second for him to buy in. But when he saw that there was something that I was really here to offer something to him, he took it seriously. But when I talked to him about honor, it's like, you got to do the right thing. Like it's, you know, it's not, people are not going to always ask you to do it. You have to like do it yourself. And he was trying to explain it. But then I said, can I give you an example of what you just did? And I showed him and seeing in his face, like this moment of, oh, connecting, of like, yeah, it impacts the way that we show up. But if you don't have the space to explore those things, if you don't have the language to articulate them, how do you intentionally use those things, right? Yeah, so loyalty is up there. The reason I asked you that is because sometimes we think we can say these people are important to us, but we don't know why, right? So loyalty can be a huge one. I know for me, when I think about relationships, I think about connection. 
So like having loyalty. connection and loyalty, those are, those are excellent words for you. We had a conversation about a school I worked at where before this school, I was very much the popular teacher and the friendly teacher and the kids always really got along with me because I got to be funny and I got to be nice and that's it. And there was a lot of safety built into those schools I worked at. So I wasn't the person that was responsible for creating safety, but then going to a school where there is no safety, right? Starting from top, you know, administrators and teachers where it feels like you're out here defending and, and fighting for your life, the kids are going to show up like that. And I had to go to a school where I had to be tough and I, was miserable <laughs> I was so miserable the kids didn't like me the staff didn't like like me but I had to like create safety and so I had to put my foot down several times to be like this behavior is unacceptable I will cancel field trips like I will create behavioral contracts like to create that safe space and it was such a teaching moment to me around how important accountability is mm. and not just punishment but like helping kids through like with discipline and helping them understand that. And on a personal note, you know, I love my mom and I would never, you know, say that she was a bad parent, but losing my dad at a young age, my dad was very much like the discipline guy. He was in the army and I never had access to that. So I had unconditional love for my mom, but I had no discipline and I had no boundaries and I was wild. I, a lot of my mental health issues developed deeper because of the lack of safety I had and like how no one in my life, including my brothers, helped me or put those boundaries up. And so having a chance to play that role for young people and then understand that, you know, warm demander, like this idea that I can be, I can, I can be friendly and kind and respectful to you, but I will always protect the space. And yesterday, I don't know if you caught it, but I am adamant about if another kid is speaking. Like I will redirect if kids are speaking when I'm speaking. Sometimes I let it go because it's not that big of a deal. But if another person is speaking and kids start speaking, I jump on that space. I am adamant about you're not going to disrespect this person, right? I want to be really clear about this. Usually school, it's not doo-doo. Usually school is like teachers talking to you. The work that I do is conversations with young people. So I'm going to ask you all, you with me? Oh, yeah, not yeah you're good, you're good. I'm gonna ask you all to share what you think. I'm genuinely curious. And especially cause you had, there's a couple boys laughing and I said like, you're not doing anything. Like you're over here laughing. It's easier for you to laugh, but it's harder to stand up and say this is important. And then after I said that to that group, one of the boys spoke yeah. one of the group and he started to take it more seriously. So I think like accountability and is, is deeply connected to safety. Knowing that like the actions that I do in this space will have consequences cool. is like a life learning skill that kids need to have access to. So for me, as much as that school was traumatic and, and very tough to get through, it taught me a huge lesson about, especially kids who maybe come from areas or come from families or communities or schools that don't, right? That have low expectations for them. We have to really kind of create that safety um, of like, yeah, I'm gonna hold you accountable to what you say. And doing that activity, it was just cool to see. I feel like I got to know the kids in such a short amount of time and what a special opportunity to know people through what they care about and what's important to them. Um, hearing kids say faith is a huge one. Hearing kids say bravery, honor, health, motivation. It's like, these are things that we can move towards. These are things that we can say, okay, health is important to me. How does that show up in the way I act? Or motivation is important to me. How do I use that? How do I use the way I feel about that? So it was a really special opportunity. I'm really grateful that several of the boys took it very seriously. Some, going back to the conversation about disengagement, sometimes I am able to extend grace to young people a little bit more than I would with older people because sometimes this is their first time talking about it. And again, it's the same thing. It may not be that it's boring, but it's so over their heads yeah. that I, it's like, I don't want to admit that I don't know what's happening or I don't want to admit that I don't get what you're talking about, right? And we had one of the boys kept asking questions and clarifying questions and people yeah. were like jumping on him. Yeah. Where he was like, I just want to understand. <laughs> we were doing the uh, things you would take to a desert island. That's and he kept right. being like, can I bring suitcases? <laughs> can I ask for more wishes? But it's a good example because he was asking for clarifying and he was being shot down. Mm -hmm. Right. The kids were. So if someone is senior not understanding it, why would they then put themselves in a more, even more vulnerable position to ask and say, I don't get this. Right. And I think that really shows up, especially in boys, yeah. this, this fear of asking for help and asking for support. And so if you're not going to ask for help and you're not going to ask for support, support and you're going to not understand it, you're probably going to disconnect. You're probably going to disengage. And I definitely saw that yesterday. I'm just trying to figure out because y'all are talking. So I was like, did you want to say something? Because again, conversation is important to me with young people. So if I'm talking, that means that y'all are listening. 
And if you are talking, that means I'm listening. So if you're having side conversations, like you can talk with the group about it. Humor is really important to me. Joking around is a big part of the work I do, right? But respect is the foundation of it. Someone's right there. I missed a word. Nick Ward is right there. <laughs> if y'all hadn't said anything, I wouldn't have known it. And what you said there was really powerful. And I, what I've, what I've, we've been, I've been with them since September, August. Mm -hmm. Some of them for a couple of years. The idea of talking, like we do this, we do check-ins every day, and I have to remind them all the time. And what I, what I, it's an interesting concept because some of them don't respond unless you take the level up mm -hmm. above their level and almost have, they have to feel like you have to be like, I have to pressurize mm -hmm. you to listen mm -hmm. to really simple instructions. When he's talking, you're not talking. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to say that 18 weeks in a row? Yeah. What, what about him talking means you're not talking requires me to remind you of this over and over. And I try and do it from a kind, what do you call it, a warm demander? Warm demander, yeah. Like, I try and offer that. And sometimes I'm just like, warm is done. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, look. And I'm like, holding space. And, I, and when I recognize what happens with a lot of the young people, and I don't understand, I don't have the answer. And sometimes I don't ask them. I wonder, why do you need to be told to do stuff that you already, I think, intellectually know? Yeah. What is it like? And some of it is like I want attention so badly that I'm just I'm I'm, I'm not even thinking about what the standards and rules are in this mm -hmm. space. I'm just gonna mm -hmm. get attention, mm -hmm. and I I think that desire is a lot of what I see happening in in classes and schools, right? Like like the one year man, the teacher said, put the put the laptop down. He was then like trying to type on it. Under, while the, um, did you just hear the teacher what he said? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And it's like this idea that, and listen, I've been, a, I've been, I've been a teen, a middle, middle schooler. I remember being stubborn and mm -hmm. wanting my own way, but they're so locked into what they want mm -hmm. that that idea that what other people want is kind of like, it's almost like it's like the field has is is blurry out there, and all I can see is I want to do this thing on the computer. Mm -hmm. I mean, one kid was trying to play a video game, like what? But but not that I don't get it, but also you're in this mindset of like, and then you get you mindset you get upset mm -hmm. when you get called out on it because you like thinking you're getting picked on, but you're obviously doing what you're not supposed to do right now. Yeah, yeah. And those layers that now that's thing that's what happens in class. I'm not their teacher. I'm in this space. I'm not here to teach you like a teacher. I'm here to build with you. But teaching, mentoring is there requires some teaching. Yeah, it requires some redirection. It requires some, and I I, I want I want. And look, they're young, so they're they're developing. Mm -hmm. So you know, everyone out there who's saying you're trying to expect too much of these middle schoolers. Well, I hold them to high expectations. Here's what I hold. This is what, here's what I describe it. With with, I expect them. I try and treat them like they're five years older than they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're 12. I'm gonna treat you like you're 17. I want to treat you like you're 17. But I'm expect you to act like you're five years younger than you are. Mm. I'm gonna expect you to act like you're seven. So somewhere, maybe, maybe you come back to being 12. I hold you to an expectation that I want you to, you know how to stop talking. You have control over your mouth. Mm -hmm. You you can tell yourself. And so all these layers of what we have to do as educators. And like I was a teacher for a lot of years. And what we do in a classroom is different. We're in this space of brotherhood. It's like, come on, man. Mm -hmm. What do you need right now? Well, I know you want attention, but can I give you good attention? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you just wait till it's your turn? Now I'm going to give you full attention. Yeah. And I think what, what schools sometimes fail to do is teachers who are exhausted and tired already, mm -hmm. they come to class, the kids goofing off, they're not paying attention, and you're like, get out. Now, if I have 25, 30 kids in a class, mm -hmm. I don't really have time to tell every kid who's goofing off, hey, I need you to stop, please. Hey, I need you to stop, please. I, sometimes in a moment of overload, I am acting out as well as an educator. And we have to give teachers some grace, but we also have to give our students some grace of understanding that that attention, negative attention is attention. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, we live in an attention culture. Yeah. I mean, it's value, right? Yeah. But I think a little bit about, well, one thing that I actually just kind of thought about is I, the idea of call out versus call in. Mm -hmm. And there's been this big push of like, we're not going to call out because that's intense. Like, we're going to call people in. But I realize like sometimes you got to call out the behavior to call in the person, right? Is like, I can't. Like, I can't address the person until we address the behavior. The behavior 
it's having a negative impact on everyone, right? Not just like you, the person, are having a negative impact. What you're doing is having a negative impact. And so yesterday, you know, I, coming in as a stranger, it was like, yeah, like, who am I to be talking to these kids like this? But then I was like, no, this is my space. Like, I'm facilitating this. I'm putting kids through an activity that's asking them to be vulnerable, right, and talk about things that are important to them. I have to be on top of it. And so there was a point where one of the boys just kept talking, and I just stopped and was like, you obviously have something you want to say like to take the floor, right? I'm not gonna let them keep talking because you over here, every time someone starts talking, you feel like that's your turn to talk. Like join the conversation. Yep. Like this is a conversation and I hear you talking. So that means you have something you wanna say. Yeah. And it was silent, but that's like calling out the behavior to call him in, yeah. right? But it's like, I'm not gonna be, I think sometimes when people see my work, it's like, oh, you're really, really nice. And that's like a, that's a portion of it. When you ask the kids who had me in that class, like we didn't mess around, right? Like we had fun but I would absolutely shut down behavior that makes learning feel unsafe for people, right? Or, and it can be in an instance, we're playing a game of Kahoot, right? And then people say, oh, this is so easy. How could you get that wrong? Like, stop, let's address that immediately, right? Like, we're not gonna do that. But that, I think that influences, right? I'm really big on influence versus manipulation with kids. And, and so much teaching is literally manipulation and not, I know we hear that word and it feels bad, but it's like, yeah, you're trying to get them to, to do what you want them to do. Yeah right and influence is showing them and them choosing to learn from it in those moments every time i do speeches teachers will apologize and be like i'm sorry you had to call kids out and blah 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 and i'm like i'm not because every time i did that i could also point to the people who are showing up and being respectful right but that every time you do that it's a chance to show them like no i'm containing the space yeah. right and i want you in it and here are my expectations i think with expectations with kids my thing is like i'm gonna have high expectations and i'm gonna help you get there yeah like, because I want them to be able to have high expectations for themselves, right. right? And that's where it starts. It's like the influencing them, right, through showing them self-regulation and helping them get themselves on track. And yesterday, going from the beginning where it was kind of chaotic and everyone's running around and, and, you know, I had to stop like several times in the first few minutes, that stopped pretty quickly. Yeah. Like that, that kind of, and there's a couple of kids, again, a couple of kids for whatever reason, no judgment on those kids. There's a couple of kids who are disengaged, yeah. right? But then they stopped bothering the people around them. So the people who were engaged could learn, right? And so then they had to kind of sit there and think about it. And then by the end of it, two of those kids were participating. Yeah. And so it's like, that's why it's important to hold that space. But it also shows them like strength without intimidation. Yeah. I think that's important as a man. Yeah. Um, working with boys to show them that I can be strong without screaming at you yep. and that I can be strong without threatening you or physically into I'm bigger than all these kids right yeah. although I, I'm sure a few of them could probably knock me out uh <laughs> gotta be realistic I certainly don't try this with high schoolers um but just being like I'm I'm here to hold the space yeah. right and I'm gonna like treat you with love and care one thing about accountability that I think a lot of people don't understand is that accountability and discipline is a sign of love, right? Helping someone build accountability. I, 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 as an adult, I struggled with self-regulation. I struggled with follow through. I struggled with accountability to anybody because I never had that pushed on me. It was like, if this was tough, quit. Right, you don't need to do this, right? And it's like, as a kid, I was like, great. Yeah. <laughs> I never have to do anything hard. Everything I do feels easy, but that's yeah. not the real world. And so then I got to the real world. Well, it is the real world, but it's not the, the advanced world, right? Like growing into adulthood. Yeah. Then I realized like, there's no one who's gonna push me. There's no one who's gonna push me to regulate myself or push me like running my own business. No one's gonna wake me up in the morning and be like, do the things that you gotta do. So I had to relearn those skills for myself. And I think that's why I'm pretty big with young people about that around like, we are going to, we're gonna keep you safe. And I told one kid one time, it's like one of, one of my videos where I was like, look, like you gotta, you gotta do this, get this assignment in, right? I've been trying to work with you. If it's not in by this day, I'm bringing your parents in, right? Mm -hmm. Because like, we're not helping you by letting you slide. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and you might be annoyed by me, but that's okay. Like, I'd rather you be annoyed and me help you yeah. than you like me and you struggle, right? And not get the help that you need and not be held accountable. And that was a big deal, you know? I just wish I would have had somebody that did that for me as a kid. Yeah. I wish I would have. Like that kind of strength would have been really powerful. Hi, homie. Hey. I like your hair. Thank you. are welcome. So many curly hair kids here. Yeah, they are. God, not the school I was just at. With all, <laughs> with all the Bradens and Jadens and Haydens and Jacksons and Braxtons and that. I swear to God, those were all kids. Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe With their feathered hair. Have you seen it? Amazing young man. 
This is Joe Locke. He's been having, he's been having an interesting year, huh? No? <laughs> you don't agree? You don't agree that you had an interesting year? Oh, okay. <laughs> Me too. I was like, there's more. Bad, there's more. I, I honestly was waiting. Was yeah, there's like, more. There's what more. He, he, he held up. He's like, oh, I'm about to get real, talk about real stuff now. You know, one of the things I really appreciated with you doing yesterday as you were asking students about when we were at the table and students came over, you know, you asked them, you know, what do you like about this school? What do you, what, what, what do you like? What do you not like? Whatever. And the one young man who said, um, oh, it, you know, it may, I mean, you may get some attitude today, mm -hmm. right? Like this idea of, you know, we've been working with them long enough in that space. I think that they have a, like they know that there's some work they have to do. Mm -hmm. They know. And I think it's, that middle school age, like no one talked to me about what I felt mm -hmm. when I was in middle school. No one asked me how I felt, like who, what? Yeah. And I realized what, we're, what, we, what we've done with them is provide them a lot of tools. And sometimes they don't know how to use them all, right? They got this toolbox mm -hmm. and they're walking around, they got all these tools, but yet they're trying to be, so I want to be, I want to prove how smart I am, but not on my paper, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I want to prove how, I want to make you as a teacher look silly because you think I'm doing blah, 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 but I'm just playing a game and I think what we are trying to help them do is say, well, that tool is, may not be serving you well here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, w are you using the right tools in the right places? Mm -hmm. You're watching people's emotions. You're paying attention. You're getting more aware. I think schools, when I think about big picture, like what, what we have to help ed educators, when you go to schools and you, you show these teachers that it's possible to hold an audience, I don't know if you've ever been to a school where schools are like, well, we don't really have assemblies, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Or they're like, mm -hmm. um... You know, or they're shocked or they're saying, hey, sorry for you have to discipline some students or to redirect them. And you're like, well, that's part of the work. Yeah. Part of the work yeah. is the redirection. Part of the work yeah. is it. Now, I've been in places where you're like, have these kids ever been in an assembly? Mm -hmm. Right. There is mm -hmm. a lack of, 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 of safe space in there. So even with me up there trying to like present, I'm sometimes feeling like I'm doing a horrible job in my mind. Right. I'm, and I'm trying to like keep it cool. And I got a good mask. So I put this mask on and I'm like. I remember one workshop, I raised my voice. <laughs> I was all, I was like, Chancho, are you yelling or are you just raising your voice? What are you doing? What are you doing right now? <laughs> I, I was just warm commander working yeah, right now. Like, yeah. I'm warm commander right yeah. now. Like, and I'm like, why do I have to do this? Every time I raise my voice, you all stop talking. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you can't stop talking. It's that you need somebody like pressurizing you. Yeah. And listen, I'm not here to waste your time. So if this is not serving you, and so in that moment of like not wanting to quit, because I was in the moment of like, go back to class. How about teachers? If you want to stay, stay. Let's move to the front. The rest teachers take the rest of these kids, take them back. Yeah. Now, I don't really mean that. My my ego felt that. Mm -hmm. My my soul felt that. And I think that for teachers, you know, we get to come on the outside and do this work on the inside of schools. For teachers who are stuck there all the time, they can't really be like, all of y'all leave, leave, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm out of here. You know, at any given moment, if I needed to, I'm out. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to begin realizing we got to provide teachers with more tools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that that's a conversation in, in education that we probably should come to in our next episode. Professional development is severely lacking in educators. Mm -hmm. I think some educators don't, have not understood what their own values are. Yeah, yeah. So when a kid pushes up against their stuff, they're, they're just operating based on I'm adult, I'm in charge, I got mm -hmm, the rules. Yeah. As opposed to my value is caring, my value is kindness, my value is respect, but yet I'm locked into the teacher role where I have to be in charge and make all the rules mm -hmm. and never be wrong. Yep. And I think if we don't begin to make education as an as a, as a entity better capable of serving young people, serving the teachers who we expect to serve young people, we're going to continue seeing the, the devastation we see in our classrooms. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's so tough because you know, I never want to put more work on teachers. And sometimes when they hear about this stuff, it feels like, okay, well, I'm going to have to do this new curriculum or I'm going to have to have advisory kind of questions all the time. But even simple moments, again, of influence where you can show your values in person. So a huge value of mine for young people is like respect, like I respect them. And I had a moment where I had a pretty explosive moment with a kid in class, but I was wrong. And it could have easily been like, not even like just ignoring him. It could have been like, we'll talk about this later. But I stopped and was like, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Like I made a mistake, like I'm sorry. And all of it, it was so silent because the kids were like, uh, and that kid later when I talked with him told me that like no adult had really apologized to him before. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, like just showing them like, yo, I, I show up, like I tell you all I respect you, 
right? I'm going to admit, and when I make a mistake, I'm going to apologize. And then, you know, a couple months later, we had a huge issue with the class destroying some property. And then it was just immediate. Kids were supposed to reflect on what happened. And a lot of them just wrote apology letters of like, mm. I'm so sorry you trusted us with this. We messed up, blah, blah, blah. And so I didn't tell them to say sorry. I asked them to reflect. Like, I was like, talk to who you need to talk to, whether it's your friends, whether it's yourself, whether it's the teachers, right? Like, we need to own this. And a lot of it was like accountability. Yeah. Like, I'm not afraid to say I'm sorry, but my job in that moment wasn't to stop and be like, let's talk about apologizing. It was just in the moment. Like, no, we're not going to look at me. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have said that. Right. Like, forgive me. Yeah. Just like that. And so sometimes even moments like that can show kids your values as a person and, and having Mr. Ward, the teacher, talk about his values and having the kids say, like, we see this in you, mm. I think is really cool. And, and what a what a great opportunity for teachers and kids to connect that way, to see the humanity in each other. And then my last word was goodness. Um, I think that I do the work that I do and I show up here every single day because I genuinely believe um, that you guys are good. Um, you guys are goodness. And I think that the more I can show myself uh, and the good in me and, and sort of pass that down to you guys that it's just gonna trickle down into the world. So um, those are my three core values. Oh, I'm curious, you all have him as a teacher. Do you all see any core values through him? Yeah. You feel, no, what's one you see that he didn't mention? Yeah. Courage. Courage. I would say getting up in front of a group of kids every day and teaching <laughs> definitely takes some courage, right? <laughs> Again, I, you know, I'm so grateful for teachers. I know they have to do a lot, but this work, when you do it, creates, I think, more connection and it creates more relationship and it helps kind of prevent some of those deeper issues from coming up or it makes it easier to repair harm when these things are done. But I know it's, uh, I know it's tough with the behaviors right now and the disengagement and I never want to come off as like, you know, teachers are doing it wrong, but it's like, what, do, what else can we do or how can we view this in a different way? And that requires everyone to drop the ego piece and say, okay, things are not working. What do we need to do? But all the way from school boards to individual teachers to kids, ego gets in the way of like, I don't want to be wrong or I'm the adult, I'm right. Like, I'm sorry, that's not a good qualifier for if you're right or not. That's right. Right? That's like, right. there's no... And telling kids you're wrong just because you're a child is the complete opposite of what we do. And we do it. <laughs> and we do it. Folks, you, this is our first time to give us... Listen, we don't have any podcasts in person. So I'm used to looking at the screen all the time. <laughs> so you probably are seeing different angles if you're watching this. But more than anything, um, if, if you're just listening to this, I hope you hear the passion in this conversation about what needs to happen in education, what we see as outsiders. Now, as a former teacher, as an educator, like we can tell our stories all day long about what we see. Our role is figuring out how we can help you, parents, support your kids to be better students in school. Teachers, support your students to be better show up in school. And it requires sometimes constant reminding and things we've already said, repeating ourselves, saying it again. And so, Yesterday was a beautiful moment. Um, I'm so glad you got to see those young men. I was great watching them. I'm, I'm always, I'm, I was trying to, you know, I'm trying to stay back as much as possible, really let them, let you, you have the space. And I think, you know, except for some a few direct redirections, like I saw them and I saw the ones who we normally would see show up and the ones who are, some of them are fighting. Yeah. Some of them are battling. What you witnessed yesterday was what we witnessed. So it was like, okay, it's not just me. Mm -hmm. It's not just me picking on them. It's. I, I'm seeing, he's seeing what I've been seeing. And so I'm trying to figure out, okay, what does this young man need? Yeah. What does this young man need to find their fire for life? Like, I see the greatness in you, and yet I'm still missing something. So thank you for being here. Thanks yeah. for being here local in the Bay. I know. So glad to be here in person with you. Out in nature, we got the sun popped out. It's going to rain apparently this weekend or something. I don't know, but we got the sun. We got the Classic. blue sky. Classic beautiful day. And the birds are chirping. So. Folks, thank you for being a part of this, this conversation today. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon on Education Monthly with my friend. Dono friend. And Ashanti Branch. See you soon. Peace. We talk about strength all the time. The strongest that you can be, if you really want to have an impact on the world, is somebody that can show up and say, here's what's important to me and here's how I stand on this. Here's how I stand by this. Here's how I show up, right? So if you say these things are important to you, if you say something like kindness or respect or responsibility is important, do you actually show up that way, right?
I appreciate y'all letting me speak to you today. I understand it's the end of a long school day. For those of you who took this seriously, it's not for me, it's for you. I appreciate you. So, cause this is a big part of the work that I do, especially for the friends that I have the one-on-one -on -one conversations with. All right, thank you all. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Taking Off the Mask podcast is produced by Ryan Louie and graphics by Kelly Wong. Guests are managed by Dan Paloma, and the podcast is edited by Samuel Matingo. We'd like to thank everyone who's been a part of the creation of this podcast, and for every guest that has been a part of the show, you are now a part of the Taking Off the Mask family. The Taking Off the Mask podcast is brought to you by the Ever Forward Club, and if you like what you've heard today, please subscribe, write a five-star review, and share this with someone. We look forward to having more conversations that matter. And please remember, there's more to you than anybody can see by just looking at you. Thank you. <laughs>